not even joking. I get so many questions about these simple rubber mats. I got these from walmart.com. I'll see if I can refine the link because I bought them a long time ago in case anybody's interested. They're the perfect size, they're very thin, amazing for wire management. Uh, not that gaff tape isn't, you know, a good solution, but a lot of times in historic places like this, so again, we're at a history museum, they don't really want gaff tape on the floor because they don't understand what gaff tape is because either other DJs buy the cheap stuff that still leaves uh, residue or they're just not using gaff tape and it leaves stuff on the floor and it makes them upset. So check this out. This is why we're using these uh, mats today. So due to the layout of it being a really small room, usually the DJs are in the corner, but I told them I didn't want to be in front of any tables. So I made the recommendation to be dead center where the dance floor is. That's their head table. So I'll be set up right here. The thing is, is I have to run a power cord from that side of the room to where I'm gonna be so that I don't have to gaff the floor. I'm gonna use these floor mats to kinda clean this up a little bit and just make it a little bit neater. So this is why these mats are clutch and I bring them to pretty much every single gig. kicking off ceremony really soon. What a gorgeous August day. Um, obviously today we're using the Everse 8. I got my iPad here, direct connection into the auxiliary input here. I really don't use Bluetooth, always direct connection. And today, because I needed two microphones, I'm actually trying out the Hollyland mic system. Let's take a look at that right here. So this is a 2.4 gigahertz microphone. I don't love that, but I'm willing to give it a shot today. So uh, I needed two mics and honestly, the venue didn't even want any amplification outside. So I'm just trying to make this as quick and simple and modest as possible. So I'm gonna give these a shot today. I know a lot of DJs feel a certain way about not having ceremony sound towards the front and hitting the back of the audience. I personally don't have a problem with it being towards the back or the side. There's a couple of reasons why I do what I do. So number one, I don't wanna be seen. So obviously I'm using the beautiful foliage here to kind of conceal me. Number two, I wanna just enhance it for the people in the back. Obviously the people in the front are gonna be able to hear regardless. This isn't a rock concert. I'm just trying to give a modest boost. The other thing is if I were to be way up there, the problem is, is I can't see my visual cue. So by standing here, I can still see the doors they're coming out of. I can watch them make their walk, know when to do the music, people can hear, and just that's what I chose to do today. Some people might disagree, but this is what we're rocking with. So Everse, I got the Hollyland, just Velcroed there, obviously going into input one. iPad, DJ Pro AI literally with my finger and that's it so we're gonna get rocking and rolling the Hollyland microphones? Like the overall they've been good for you? Yes. Yes, they are. So I'm using DJ Pro AI. I always use four decks. I use these two to mix in between. So 
let's get this next song going. And then I have these two decks. This is for the wedding party. This is for the bride. Then I'll remove the song, put their exit song on, and that's it. So I have those two decks ready to go. And these I'm just toggling in between for the pre-ceremony music. I'll also use this for cocktail hour. Honestly, it doesn't get any easier. Give a blessing of gratitude to all our elders and ancestors who faced discrimination with perseverance and responded to injustice by demanding justice. Talking about and thinking about for years is finally here. My heart and my soul feel so perfectly complete to be standing in front of your dad jokes and your witty puns. The gift of time that you spend with me on our evening walks with our cats or going for a drive. The gift of growth, always growing side by side. would share why I think they really should be getting married um, because they have done a lot for me as a best friend but they have really shown me what I so DJ real talk we have a beautiful summer night we have a beautiful courtyard with games and the bars outside so here's my dance floor. so this happens no DJ should ever be upset or fret about this. When it gets a little darker, we'll start kicking it up. And when the couple finally makes their way back in, I have no doubts that this is gonna be a great, great party. Sometimes DJs were competing with photo booths, yard games, fire breathers, you know, anything other than getting people on the dance floors. I just wanna keep it real. Not every dance floor is a rager and that's okay. And sometimes we have to work really hard. So I guess it's going to be one of those parties. I'm up for the challenge. What did I tell you? You just got to be patient and know how to work. story time. I just got home. It is 11.15. I actually was able to pack up and get out of there pretty quickly. What a day. <laughs> um, overall, it, it turned out awesome. Uh, the couple was tremendous. The wedding event planner was tremendous. The officiant was wonderful. Everybody who I worked with today was a team of rock stars. However, this place, um, 
was very, very challenging for two reasons. First is going to be the sound restriction. Now, a lot of us are definitely familiar with wedding, let me rephrase, non-wedding venues wanting to be event spaces when they have no business being event spaces. So this was a museum and for whatever reason, they do weddings. And the problem that I have with this is they book couples without being transparent about their sound restrictions. And then it kind of gets sprung on them, you know, a month or two out when they're doing their final walkthrough. In this case, it was uh, two months ago when I personally did the walkthrough with the couple. That's when they were actually made aware because the whole time we were doing our final planning meeting, all they did was talk about, you can't be loud, you can't be loud, you can't be loud. So in preparation for today, I have my Electro Voice 30Ms. Didn't even bring the 50 50s out. So we're talking a, a 10 inch woofer, um, very modest sound. Now they sound fantastic. It was only about an 80 person wedding today. So I thought that they would be perfect. No matter what I did, it was just always a problem. Um, I must have been asked to turn my volume down. Well, the first one was at the ceremony um, about nine times during cocktail hour. None during dinner. I was asked to turn my subs down like the last half hour, probably in total 15 times I had to have a conversation about volume. I did the best I could. It was uh, a tug of war of just trying to honor, you know, the, my commitment to my couple to show them a good time and not ending in a fight with the wedding venue. I actually had a, a couple of uncomfortable conversations with them, uh, pretty much saying, you know, do you find what I'm doing right now really unreasonable? And it was, well, we get the cops called on us. And I just wanted to say, then you shouldn't be taking people's money and hosting events any which way. So that was very, very, very challenging for me today. The second thing that was really challenging was uh, this, it was a beautiful summer night. It's like perfect, very little humidity, no rain. It was just awesome. So a lot of people wanted to be outside and they had a beautiful courtyard. And then it was one of those parties, as you saw in the previous clips that, you know, if the couple went outside for photos or just to get a little fresh air, people just followed. So I would get these waves of people where they'd come in and party for 20 minutes and then they'd leave to go outside and hit the bar or they would leave to go get um, something from the grilled cheese truck or they would go out and play yard games or they would go out and socialize with the couple. And that's fine. Um, you know, it, it, it was hard to kind of rebuild that energy and then it would drop out and then rebuild that energy. So I'm like mentally exhausted. Actually, when I get inside, I'm going to go take a like Excedrin because my brain between the running around, the annoyance of the decibel limit, and then, you know, just really mentally working uh, tonight to try to just find that balance. So overall, um, you know, it was, it was a great wedding and, you know, the couple thanked me. They had a good time. I had a bunch of other people come up to me and everything, but we have to be, you know, real, you know, not every gig log is just going to be like, you know, these epic dance floors. I had to work for every single person on my dance floor tonight repeatedly for like two and a half hours. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of myself and I think it was a, it was a good time, but I just wanted to, to keep it real a little bit. You know, the mark of a professional is not, you know, as I say, what you do when things go right, it's how you handle when things aren't going your way. So that was the lesson for today. I somehow cut my, my finger here. I've finally cleaned up the blood. And what was funny is I was picking up my Ape Labs, um, maxis and their white cream in color and I noticed that there was blood on them and I actually got annoyed for a second I'm like who bled on my up lights and then as I'm like you know picking them up moving them around and I, it's like smearing I realize oh my god it's me and I didn't even feel this because that's you know mobile DJ life just in the moment so focused that you know um so I have to go clean blood off of me 
I want to get I want to get out of this dress. Um, I need some Excedrin. With that, I'm going to close this out. Uh, I'm going to go to bed. And then it's time for DJ Expo, baby. I'm going to be driving on down to Atlantic City for the entire week. I will see you there. Let's grab a slice. So thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you later.